Hi, my name is Lerj and I'm an online tutor of math and physics. In this video, we're going to talk about uh, FRQ type number three of AP Pre-Calculus. So there's already a question on the same type uh, on my channel. I'll make sure to put a link in the description. You can check that out as well. It's, it's also a good question. So let's read this one out. It's about a wall clock, of course, as we can see. Okay, the figure shows a large clock mounted to a vertical wall. And the clock has an eight inch long moving minute hand and the center of the clock is 120 inches directly above the floor. Okay, I would, I would prefer to, uh, you know, annotate as I read. So the center of, it's not a great thing. Uh, the center of the, oops, the center of the, um, uh, the clock is about 120, not about exactly 120 inches from the, uh, from the floor. And at time t equals zero, the minutes hand, uh, is pointed directly up at the 12 o'clock. So as it's shown in this position. So the clock is not working properly and the minute hand is moving twice as fast as it should. Interesting. Does the next time the minute hand points directly up to 12 minutes, uh, sorry, up to the 12 mark is at 30 minutes, which makes sense, right? Because ideally it would come at the same position after 60 minutes, but since it is moving twice as fast, it's going to take half the time. So 60 over two is definitely 30 minutes, which makes perfect sense. As the minute hand moves, the distance between the end point of the minute hand and the floor periodically changes, decreases and increases, which makes sense, right? Right now, the minute hand is at what distance the tip of the minute's hand it is definitely 120 plus uh eight inch because the length of the minute hand itself is eight inch right so this is going to be eight inch and it makes sense that when the minute hand comes at three its height is 120 when it is at six the height is 120 minus eight and so on and so forth um the periodic function h models the distance in inches between the end point of the minute's hand and from the floor and the floor as a function of t in minutes. Okay, cool. The graph of h and its dashed midline for two circles or two cycles is shown. So this is the graph and this is obviously the midline. Five points f, g, j, k, and p are labeled on the graph. No scales indicated, no axis is presented. Determine the possible coordinates in the form of time and h of time means the height. Uh, for the five points f g j k and p so obviously f is the is the highest point right and when is the when is the height highest because this is nothing but the highest point as we can clearly see and the highest point means the you know highest uh you know the highest height so the highest height is definitely 120 plus 18 which is exactly as it is shown right now because that is the maximum height from the from the floor so that's going to be 120 plus 8 which is 128 so i know that at t equal to 0 the height is 128 and inches so that's that's how they want the coordinates uh you know t comma h of t so t is just 0 and uh then it is just 128 makes sense right G is the point where it is at the midline. So obviously it makes sense that it is at the midline when it reaches three. Um, so what is the time for it to reach three? Generally, it would have been 15 minutes, but the clock is moving twice as fast. So it'll take half the time, which means that it is going to take 7.5 minutes, right? Can we agree on that? 7.5 minutes and the height is just just 120 right because there is no additional height offered by the uh, you know by the minutes hand so it's going to be uh 7.5 comma 120. then j i think you might have predicted by now is the minimum guy so the minimum thing is when it is at six so what is the height obviously this is eight and this is also eight so you're looking the high you're looking at the height of the six from the floor which is going to be 120 minus eight right 120 minus 8 so this is going to be the height from the floor which is 112 and what is the time it's another 7.5 minutes which is obviously 15 minutes then we have k it's it's very easy now k is once again at the same position you know it is at the 9 9 is at the same position or the height as of 3 3 is already 120 so k is also 120 
and the time is going to be 15 plus 7.5 which is 22.5 minutes and finally p p just comes back at the same point uh, which is 128 same as f so 128 and the time is of course 30 minutes which adds up because they also tell us that it's uh, 30 minutes for one complete rotation and 22.5 plus 7.5 is also 30 so yeah our work is correct okay nice okay part b is refer to the graph of h in part a okay there we go the t coordinate of g is t1 the t coordinate of g is t1 huh that's confusing the t coordinate of g is t1 where is g there you go what is t1 the t coordinate so this is t1 and the t coordinate of j is t2 where is j j is here and this is t2 okay cool now the interval of t1 to t2 which of the following is true huh there was no need to mark it anyway we could have just said that you know this is the portion which they are talking about you know g to j so this is what they are talking about so they are saying that in this interval which of the following is true okay all right h is positive and again whoa, 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 whoa h is not positive is that positive i don't think so yeah no okay sorry let's read this up H is positive and increasing, huh? It's not increasing for sure because we can clearly see that it is decreasing in nature, correct? It is decreasing in nature. So it has to decrease here. So it has to decrease, it has to decrease. Now the question is whether H is positive or negative. So although I, for a minute, for a second, thought that H is negative because I was thinking for this to be the X axis, but remember there are no axes given over here. And you can clearly see that the height is never going negative. It's always positive, right? So it has to be positive and it has to be decreasing in nature. So option B makes absolute sense. <laughs> and the last one asks about, just say how the rate of change of H is changing. Remember, rate of change is changing. So they're asking, the rate of change of, you know, the AROC, the change of AROC, if it makes sense. What is AROC? Average rate of change. I'm just going to write it over here. So they are asking, how is the average rate of change changing? AROC, average rate of change is changing. And what is average rate of change? What is the change of average rate of change? Average rate of change only AROC represents whether the function is increasing or decreasing. So if I say that AROC is positive, it means that the function is increasing. But if I say that the change of AROC is positive, it means that the function is concave up. Uh, I'm sorry, I will come again. What I meant is, if the average rate of change is increasing, then it is concave up or vice versa. If it is concave up, then the average rate of change is increasing. And if it is concave down, then the average rate of change is decreasing. All right. However, if I just say that the average rate of change is positive, so it means that the function is increasing, nothing to do with concavity. And if the average rate of change is um uh, negative then the function is decreasing so there are two separate things please be careful about how the question is being phrased so as of now they are just asking whether the average uh, sorry uh, the rate of change the average rate of change how is that changing is that increasing or is that decreasing from t1 to t2 so you can clearly see that from g to j it's a smiling face and a smiling face is concave up and in concave up the average rate of change is increasing so the answer to this part would be it is increasing in nature hope that makes sense there will be another question which i will be posting real soon so keep an eye out for it by subscribing to my channel i'll see you later Bye bye